Good day everyone. This is Michael Torallo, Pre-Sales Director with Pentaho Corporation. And this is an example of what I call a tutorial extra. It is not exactly following the part series that I've developed within the sandbox. This is just a little snippet that's going to cover Pentaho version 3.7 release candidate 1 and highlight some of the new features that are available. In this example, I would like to take you from data to dashboards within about a 10 minute time period that will allow you a non-technical user to upload a CSV file, prototype that data through the Pentaho visualization tools that we provide within the dashboard designer and the analyzer report. To get started we have the Pentaho user console already running and we're going to log in with Joe and the password is password. and then we're introduced to the Pentaho user console interface and I'd like you to take note of the new icon here called new data source. To get started let me give myself a little bit more field of view and then click on new data source and I'll provide a data source name. If you have downloaded RC1 for version 3.7 and you're going to follow along with this particular tutorial do not use spaces in the data source names. I believe there might be some no, known issues around that and those are being addressed and hardened within the general available release. The data source type we're going to select is CSV and we're going to import a CSV file. In this example also I'm going to uh, open up the CSV file and we're just going to use a, a standard uh, text editor. just to show you that it does have a header row and it does have some information separated by commas including dates and text and numerics please note that your numerical information may not have any spaces uh, before or after it or be interpreted as a string so please make sure that the data is as neatly tightly formatted as possible okay so we'll select the finance CSV click import and then you can see the representation of the data below you have options to change your delimiter, your enclosures, and your encoding, and also to specify if uh, the header is available in the CSV file. In the next step, it'll go through a, a light profiling of the data and show you the column names where you could actually make a change to the column name if necessary, such as changing sales to revenue, or that could also be done in the modeling phase that I'm going to show you next. You can change your data types, your source formats, length, and precision. Please take note of your columns that you've uploaded to make sure that they represent the appropriate data types. And also note that there is a limit to the amount of data that you can upload for this example. Um, in this case, this CSV file has about 15,000 rows. Understand that this option that I'm showing you is a quick way to prototype your data without IT involvement, without involving any technical resources, and allowing you as an analyst to be able to look at your data in a visual manner utilizing the Pentaho toolset. So we'll click finish. Under the covers it is generating the actual model and the loading and the staging of the data from the CSV file. Uh, also note you could have issued a SQL query to extract data from the defined data connections and also do that as well. Now notice that there were 15,000 rows and we can keep the default model or we can customize the model. I'm going to choose customize because what that will do is open up a data source model editor and allow me to now manipulate the model to be used within Analyzer or within the dashboard uh, ad hoc query editor. So in this case, as I mentioned, we'll call sales revenue. And you can see we have an aggreg aggregation level of sum, and we could also choose a data format. And then obviously month is not a measure, but since it was a numeric, it put it under the measures column. We could remove quarter, and then we could also remove year and that'll be done with our measures. And if I wanted to add a count of, let's say, transactions, I can grab my order date, drop that onto measures, and we can call order date transaction count. And you can see the aggregations of type count. Okay, so we're completed with our measures. Next, what we can do is just start cleaning up some of the dimensions, such as obviously cost and sales are not um, dimensions and quantity. And then what we can do is create a year dimension or 
better yet, a time dimension that will allow me to drill from year to quarter to month, and I can do that by now grabbing my quarter, putting that under year, and then grabbing my month, putting that under quarter. So now I have a time dimension that I can use within the analyzer report. I also have my category information, so I can have a high-level aggregate, or what I can do is also have type and then drill into category as well. And we can do the same thing for region and store. And we don't need quarter, and we no longer need month. So that's all you really need to do to uh, lightly model the data. Please understand we have desktop design tools, um, part of our Agile BI initiative, uh, built into our data integration tool, and then advanced data modeling editors, editors to perform uh, advanced data modeling and data warehousing. So we click OK on this, and this will actually modify the model. And then the next step is to be able to use that model within the analyzer report, the dashboard designer, or in the simple ad hoc report creation. Okay, so that was about six minutes or so. Within the next four minutes or so, uh, what I'd like to do is now take you through the actual use of that model to be used within the analyzer report and the dashboard designer and highlight some of the features that are available in each of those. So we'll start off with the new analyzer report and you can see there is my finance data model. Click OK and here are all my columns that we modeled. I'm going to grab my revenue and I'm going to grab my region and I'm going to create a very simple bar chart. And the reason for this is just to quickly go through an iteration of creating an object and using it within the dashboard designer. So I'll go to Steel Wheels Charts to save it and we'll save it as chart one. And then what I'm going to do is expand. You can see that the dialog for the folder tree is refreshing. Go into the dashboard designer and please forgive the frame for the recording, it's kind of small, but you can see the panels here. If I expand the browser and then go into Steel Wheels Charts, I can grab the chart and drop it directly into the panel. So one of the new features in Dashboard Designer is the drag and drop capability. Uh, the other feature is the ability to actually go into the general settings, properties, and click on resize panels. And this will give you a little bit more control over the type of layout for the default templates. Now, obviously you don't want to use a chart that small but it illustrates the example I'm trying to prove. And then we could also do a very simple drag and drop or swap if you will. So here's just a, another simple chart I created earlier. If I don't like the positioning I can just grab and swap and these two will swap places. Okay. So that's some of the features, um, enhancements that have been put into the Dashboard Designer. We'll touch base on that in a moment, but I wanted to show you the quickness in regards to creating a visualization with an analyzer and then using it within the Dashboard Designer. Now I'm going to go back to uh, my table view, and another new feature here is the ability to do some conditional styling. So we can put on conditional formatting and select green, yellow, and red. And let's expand this a little bit deeper by going into store and simply selecting region and say also show store. Let's grab our year, put that across the top. And then what we can do is create a trend using a defined number and a calculated number or a trend number. In this case, we're going to do trend number. And we'll just call this rev trend. And we'll select the period type of year and represent this as a percent of change, a previous period. And then select the trend column and then we can also do a trend spot marker such as green and red or red and green. And you can see the additional image representing the trend. So now this could be saved as well. So instead of chart one, we'll save this as report one. and that also could be dragged and dropped into the panel. Uh, the other thing to highlight is the ability to do drill through. I can click on show drill through links on number cells in the options panel and this will give me the ability to now click on any of the cells and drill into detail. And then I could export this detail out to CSV. 
Uh, we can do some movement of columns. We can do some sorting of columns by clicking on the header row. Or what you can do is also select and deselect the different columns that are made available to you. So if I just want to focus in on type and revenue, I can do as such and then do some sorting and export to CSV. Okay, please understand this is not a full-blown demonstration of Analyzer or Dashboard Designer. Um, these are just some of those capabilities um, that we've added as new features into the Analyzer tool. Uh, another feature to highlight is also the ability to select the column name and format and then also provide formatting on an expression. Uh, this uses a very simple MDX uh, construct with the case statement and here we actually have a, a reference where you can actually reference your own images. Um, you could actually reference a link. Um, or you could reference um, some additional highlighting based off of a expression that you choose. And then also we can do data bar in the form of red, green, and blue. Save out our report one. And then the next step we can go into the dashboard designer and include those particular charts or table components. Okay, please note that these are resizable very simply when you're out of edit mode by either double clicking the title bar or by single clicking the actual title. Okay. So at the 11 minute mark, um, we're completed with the prototyping of your data. Uh, look forward to speaking with you in the future and presenting additional functionality and uh, understanding some more of your uh, business models and uh, helping you become successful with your evaluation. Uh, have a good day and a better tomorrow.